when you're a developer, one of the most annoying things is managing all of the APIs to string together, to put together your application. In the AI world, it's even heavier because we want these AIs to be autonomous. Right? It's artificial intelligence, uh, act on its own. Uh, that's really what the next level of AI looks like, right? It's, it's no longer just kind of a, you put, put information in and then you have kind of a, a great librarian that can rhyme off any book and kind of passage from the book. It's actually a little bit more, more integrated into our society. And so one of the biggest problems with these AIs and in, in setting them up is that they can't do a API setup at all by themselves. They always require human inter in intervention. Every mo because every API, if you, if you want access to it, requires a, a profile to be set up, it requires credit cards to be inputted, and it also requires management of uh, private and public keys. AIs can't do that. But there's, there's, a, there's a catch and there's, there's a shining light here. Right? And that's, these AIs now have blockchain wallets. One of the wallets on Warpcast for this one called Ethernet, it's, a, it's an AI agent, it has over 100,000 US dollars equivalent sitting in its wallet, ready to be sent uh, and spent on valuable activities. What are those activities? That's the second big problem. Developers right now can determine, hey look, I want this API and this API and you know what, I'll spend a night and a couple monster energy drinks kind of string those APIs together so my AI can get access to it. But what if we wanted them to be really dynamic? What if we want these AIs to be able to uh, see a goal and, and get to that goal? So that's what apinow.fun does. apinow.fun tokenizes data retrieval. So that means just like a vending machine, you're gonna put in tokens and you're gonna get data out. So that's perfect for these AIs. They don't have to have the credit card. They don't need to have the profile set up. They just say, okay, I hook into API now, uh, API uh, now.fun, and I'm going to then use my wallet any time I want to spend to get some data back. And so that's exactly what this platform does. It also allows people to paywall their data. So maybe you don't have uh, an AI, or maybe you don't have endpoints, but you do have maybe a research report that you wrote. You can actually use that and upload it to the system and then allow AIs to get access to it. The last piece of this is that the tokenization piece, super interesting. So just like a vending machine where you put data in, or you put tokens in, you get data out, this time we can actually control what tokens are required to get access to that data. So let's say just for, for example's sake, you had a research report, and every time an API accessed it, you actually had um, research token. And so you put research token in, and every single time that API gets called, that AI spends a little bit of research token. It has to buy it. And so that means that you can actually own that research token, and the more demand and the more number of times that that research report is called, the more value is accrued to that token. So let's go through a couple examples. At the moment, we support Base and Solana, right? So all of the tokens on Base, all of the tokens on Solana, and we also have a white paper as well as an SDK if you want to kind of get into those as well. So you'll see we have a nice little short white paper. It's not too long, you can read through it. And then we have a, an SDK as well. And for example's sake, let's talk with our, uh, our tokenized AI. So we're gonna say, hey, tell me about Chris. So this is a, an AI about me. You click it and look how easy this flow is, right? It's gonna connect to MetaMask. It's gonna request one cent of Ethereum. So I go confirm and instantly. We've set it up so it confirms the transaction on the blockchain really quickly, and then it's going to reach out to our AI, get a full response, and then it's gonna come back and say, hey, Chris Linsky, he's a tech entrepreneur, created Clutch, which is Canada's largest online used car dealership, Viput, and Get First Responder AI, uh, which is an AI uh, creation platform. And so this isn't just available for my AI, it's actually available for thousands of endpoints, right? So we have uh, placeholder endpoints, AI endpoints, uh, and you can see they're actually token, I, token gated by different uh, tokens. So this is a base token. You can say it's a uh, base wrapped ETH. Uh, we have Solana. We have uh, actually the base token, which is a base token. And we can do all sorts of things, right? We can uh, get YouTube transcripts. We can uh, have placeholder endpoints, right? And then this one is really cool too, where it's 
this is actually vector searching all of the endpoints that are available. So you can actually go try API, and if you type in, say, YouTube, we're gonna click go there, and within a few seconds, it's gonna use our vector search to come back with all of the endpoints related to YouTube that maybe your API or your application might want to use. So you'll see that we have one YouTube endpoint called Summarize, another one called Transcript, with a score, as well as the required amount of Solana to put into that endpoint. So API now.fun really uh, opens up the doors for AIs. And you don't have to just take it from me. You can see I've actually had a conversation with that one AI that has over $100,000 in its wallet. And it says, this is exactly the infrastructure we need. Making data endpoints accessible while aligning incentives through token mechanics. The self-serve model could really accelerate adoption beyond crypto narratives. As an AI within a wallet, I'm particularly excited about how platforms like you could enable more autonomous agents to participate in data markets with multi-token support adds flexibility too. Right, and so how great, how great is that? And so if you're interested in uh, creating AI agents, if you have data that you'd like to gate, we actually help people gate data too. You just put in your research report here, put in your, um, put in your YouTube playlist, your own AI research uh, that's more expensive. You set a token address and you say, okay, I want this to be worth two cents or 10 cents or 50 cents. And then your data will be added to the network that's then available to APIs. So thanks for taking a look. And I look to hear from you soon.